Victoria as my mate, so how did that deal come about and what was your sort of decision behind going with the promotion? I think I always wanted to be with Cage Warriors. I got offered and offered me like there was speaks of bummer stuff like that, but I fought Cage Warriors February and lost and I wanna prove myself, you know what I mean? I, I, that wasn't me fighting, like it was a bad fight, so I wanted to go back and prove myself and do it again. That last time out, what do you think it was sort of contributing factors to sort of that went wrong if you like? A cliche to say my weight cut was too good. <laughs> Like really good, like I weighed in it for a 70 kilo fight at 66 because I was eating what I wanted and just, I wasn't putting weight on. Like, I, I went for a big Turkish platter thing for the night before the weigh-ins. Woke up the next morning, I was 67. By the time weigh-ins came, I was 66. Just couldn't put weight on. I had a full English in the morning as well. <laughs> <laughs> and looking forward now, obviously, Steve Amy will come up. Mm -hmm. Last time out, I think it was 14 seconds and he got a stoppage. Yeah. But what you sort of make of him as a fighter? And yeah. He's good. I'm not gonna. He's not. He is good. He's average everywhere. Like he's not a. He's not a brilliant stand-up fighter. Brilliant wrestler. Brilliant jiu-jitsu. Like he knows what he's doing. He's got it all planned out. Like he's good at it. Like he's good at everything. But he did win in 14 seconds. But he did get tagged with a left hook of an average as shit fighter. Like very average. So I'm tagging with more than left hooks. <laughs> Tell you that for now. <laughs> Quite a big height difference as well between us, I know yeah. Steve's not the tallest of the division. Do you think that's going to play a part in the fight? No, um, not really, because I watched him fight Paul McBain, and Paul McBain I think probably is taller than me, and he dealt with Paul McBain's height well. I, when Paul got comfortable, he started to struggle, but for the early round, I think he dealt with it well, but like I say, they're both average strikers anyway, so... You look as well now, there's you, Proctor, one of all signed the Cage Warriors. Mm -hmm. Do you think they could be looking at potentially having a North show? I know there's been nothing announced or anything, but is that something you'd like to see? I think they don't have a choice, do they? They know the ticket sales they would get off, like, so, like look at Louis. Louis probably is all ridiculous amounts of tickets to go down in Birmingham. He's a popular kid. Adam, when Adam fought on Bammer in Newcastle and the reception he got was crazy, do you know what I mean? I think. If you put the local North East lads on and Cage Warriors there, they'd sell the place out. And Because there's hidden little talents that Cage Warriors don't know about yet that they can get on the card. So I think I think it would be a good shout. But Speaking of sort of UK MMA and stuff as well, that's sort of really a hotbed at the minute. But mm -hmm. the North East in terms of talent, how's that looking? Tremendous. You've got like the fish tank team, TFT. Look at them, they've got smashing it with a cross in and you've got our gym rotor rough house we've got all the amateurs coming through we've got little josh Morati, that kid two times jiu-jitsu world champion man that kid's amazing you know he tapped me out with a triangle the other day and i was like how did that happen he went just been watching it and i was like <laughs> you know what i mean i just think i think the northeast probably is one of the biggest places for mma at the moment but it's still a secret i don't think many people know what we've got what do you think that's down to I honestly don't know. Exposure, it could just be exposure. Like, New Sunderland's not. A, I think Sunderland's the hotbed for it. Like, I don't think Newcastle have all the tremendous fighters. They've got good fighters. Like, fair enough, they do. Middlesbrough have good fighters, but if you look in Sunderland, there's loads of talented fighters around Sunderland Shields area, and I just don't think because it's such a small place. Like, considering like the likes of Manchester, you got the people from there who aren't half as good as some of the pros here, but are getting more exposure because it's a bigger place. I think that's all it's out there. Going back as well, you want about the weight cut being mm -hmm. an issue, well, not being an issue, being too good, if you like, from mm -hmm. your last uh -huh. Um I know you've tried a lot of different sort of techniques and things like that before cutting weight. Mm -hmm. It's still a big issue in the sport of MMA. What do you think's got to change to sort of I stop would, the issues that we've got? I would say a week before weighing of the company and say, like, if you're like seven, eight kilos overweight a week before, you can't cut that amount of weight in a week. You can, but I don't think it's safe for your body. I'm fighting in five weeks' time and I'm four kilos overweight now. Just so I don't have to kill myself. Like I don't want to have to kill myself, it's not worth it. And I think I think doing stuff like that just makes it a little bit safer for the lads. Like I know there's people out there that are willing to put their body through and cut that amount of weight to then regain it straight after the weigh ends, but I just don't think it's safe, mate. Like in the long run, it's it fucks you. In reality, it's absolutely horrible.
So if it, let's say for argument's sake they took that on board a week before, would there be then a rehydration you could only rehydrate so much or No, I just think like a little just a little check to send them if let them know where you're at, you know what I mean? So they can know you're going on a fight week and you're either gonna have to kill yourself to make weight. And like they know then, say I'm fighting at sixty five and the week before I'm seventy five and they think the kid's got ten kilos to lose in a week. Let's get a replacement now in case he can't make the weight. And then it's safer for them that way and it's easier for them that way and it gets the show continued and the show going easier, but that's just my suggestion, but I'm not a promoter, I'm a fire. <laughs> if we move back as well to your sort of fight career now, is it a multi-fight deal that you've got with Cage Warriors? Yep. Yeah. What's the sort of plan then? Let's say three, five fights, I don't know how much deal is, but looking to the... It's a deal, I can't say yeah, no, until no, the is released, but it's, it's a deal, it's a good enough one. So by the end of that deal, where would you be looking to be within the promotion? Challenger for the title, no doubt. Mm-hmm. I wanna, with me only being like five weeks out and being four kilos on the weight, I think bantam weight would be a good, a good weight for me. I'm tall. I would be, I would be strong as a bantam weight. I would be able to cut like two or three kilos in weight, which two or three kilos is not even. You know what I mean? I'd be able to cut that and be safe with that. I think I would make. I think I would be good at bantam weight. So I think I'll get this year out of the way. Get this fight out of the way. And then I've got the IBJJF Dublin in December, and then the Europeans in January. And I look to fight maybe for end of February, March, see what cage warrior is it. But it keeps the stops as going fat over Christmas. I'm a really bad, like, I'm a secret eater, man. I love it. <laughs> little sneak up chocolate bar on the, on the sly while no one's watching, like, 100%. You're looking at both weight divisions as well, then. <laughs> Fellow weight division, stacked at the minute. It's- Crazy, you've got the tournament coming up. Yeah. How do you sort of see that panning out? Lewis Monarch, 100%. Yeah. He'll stop Dean Truman, and I think he'll fight Aiden Lee. I don't think, I think, uh, is it Aiden Lee? Aiden Lee Paul yeah. either. I don't think Aiden Lee's got any problems with Paul McBain. And that's, that's personal opinion. I don't know, I'm not saying Paul's a shit fighter, by the way. Yeah, Paul's a good fighter, but he is good. He deserves to be in the tournament, but I think Aiden's got quite a good, he's got a good IQ, you know what I mean? He's an intelligent fighter. But then I think Louis is an intelligent fighter as well. I don't think, I think Dane Truman's had his day. I think he was good five years ago. Like, in the nicest way possible, he was good a few years ago. But Louis, Louis only, what, like 23, 24 or something like that? No. Like, he's young, he's fresh. Like, he looks he looks in good shape at the moment. It's probably the best shape I've seen him look in. And I honestly think, I think he'll, I don't think he'll go out the first round between him and Dane. But with Louis, uh, Louis got everything. He's an all rounder, and he like he, he's not that good at everything. Like I said, that Steve Imbles average at everything. Louis like really good at everything. He's a good striker. His wrestling is good. His, his jitsu is good. And I just think Dean's a bit of a one. He can wrestle, but I don't think Louis got any problems. I think I genuinely do think Louis wins the tournament. That's not me being biased towards the northeast. Like that's if I wasn't from the northeast, that would be my opinion. In you seen the fellow when you move to Bantam way, what sort of make that division now that you've got there's some tough fights in there as well? I know there's a couple of names in particular that you'd sort of fancy. I don't even know much Bantam way, so I only know that Jack Shaw I know that Jack Shaw and his teammate. You know that Jack Shaw is an absolute animal like you know, he's a machine him. I know I know him, um his teammate, I forgot what he is called. I don't know, there's some there was um when the Cadroids did the card in Belgium a few good bantamweights on there that I looked at, I see, and uh, I can't remember what they're called, but there was a few good ones in there, and I was like, like, I just want fights, like, I, I don't want boring, like, I don't want to buy, like, take 50 people down to Colchester for Steve Amable to try and hold on for dear life because he can't stand with us, or for Steve Amable to try and stand with us because he doesn't want to wrestle with us, bro, bro, you know what I mean? I want an exciting fight where people go, do you know what it was worth a four and a half hour travel to come and watch this, not, like, travel down and go, Oh shit, I'm not going to another one of his fights. You know what I mean? I want fights. I'm not I don't care where or who, like I just bring a fight. That's like that's fight. <laughs> Spot on <laughs> <here>. <laughs> Um have we got any sponsors or anything like that like you want to shout out? Ah, you know, shout out C B D Life. Official sponsor of Fight and Talk as well. I was about to say <laughs> Fight and Talk podcast as well. I wanna shout out I've just been sponsored recently of for well, last night of AJA commercial cleaning, block paving. Out like that, that, that was spot on. Um, me tattoo artist, Shades of Grey in Newcastle. Give him a shout for tattoos, he's the one like. Um, I have loads of the Belly and Boutique, Head Hut, desserts delivered. Hey, think of that for after your fight, desserts <laughs> delivered, that's the shot. They're going to deliver out Colchester. 
I'll tap one down. <laughs> Heat it up as soon as I finish. Oh, Catherine Forty is sports man. So you know, if, if you're any uh, any fighter has an injury, she's the one. Like, spent like three months on my shoulder, only getting to the end, and started seeing her. And, like, I had full mobility in my shoulder about a month later. It was amazing. Like, if I have forgotten any sponsors, Hard Life Fightwear. I can't forget them. They give us everything. You know what I mean? They've sorted us out from day one. Then, but if I have forgotten any sponsors, I, I do apologise. I'm just a bit thick. Punching the face all day. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone else you want to thank as well? Like friends, family, gym, anything like that, mate? Always thank my friends, but obviously my biggest shout out goes to Amp like every time. The man's a fucking diamond. He's I've, he's not a, he's my coach, but he's my best friend, you know what I mean? I put up with him on a daily basis. We talk to each other and we wind each other up and like it's probably times he'd love to knock us out, but like he knows he kinda of, You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, I'm joking. It definitely is Amp though. Like if I shout out anyone for the support and the fucking He's a diamond of a broke your date out for anyone. He's he sorted me right out. I came to Sunderland one now and like I've got everything I need now in Sunderland because of him. And just everyone from the gym, like everyone, even if they don't feel included and they don't feel part of the gym, they don't feel like they're helping us in my fight camp. Turning up to the gym's helping me enough because it's bringing the numbers for me to train with. So anyone that's turning up and being regular at the classes, I appreciate it all. And I'm going to get worth it November the 17th. Can I get a prediction for November seventeenth? Mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to sound vain and go on, I'm not going out in the first yeah. round. I, uh, I think everyone in the gym said first round knockout, but I've said third round. I've said it like I don't think he's got the fitness to keep up. I'm like, I've I've got the energy to go all day, me like I'll do round after round after round. I don't think he's got that. It didn't show in his Paul McBain fight. I don't know if you watched it. Like third round, he was a bit like. So, I get a boost. Like I'll I'll pick up me. I'll get I'll start off at a metal pace, and I think third, first will be all right because a dime some pro- unhealthy for me. So <laughs> the first round would be lovely if we can go over that. Like, but I don't know. If you're gonna put a bet on, I would say first round submission. 